<laughs> <laughs> you just wanted to see me get overwhelmed, didn't you? Um, let's That's, see. He, he excels at that, sir. <laughs> Guardians of the Galaxy was fast-paced, and I don't think I could keep up. Guardians of the Galaxy was like a wet, loose piece of pasta that slips through your fingers. Uh, <laughs> Guardians of the Galaxy uh, was a show I endured. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, everybody, and welcome to The Falling Tower. Watch the first podcast, the podcast in which we watch the first episode of a series and we talk about it. So if you want us to watch the first episode of a series in the comments below, just say WTF, My Little Pony, or WTF, Seinfeld, or whatever, and we'll watch the first Seinfeld or My Little Pony. Don't do My Little Pony, please. And this is with comedian and laugh a minute, Michael Kenyon Rosenberg. We also have YouTube content creator and laugh every 15 seconds, Daryl and Kelleher. Hello. There we are. And my name's Ryan T. Husk, laugh an hour. How you guys doing? <laughs> that about, was the one about, right there. <laughs> that's about fair, yeah. <laughs> I produce exactly one laugh per minute. Yeah. How do you feel about that, Daryl and uh, last per minute. Uh, yeah, it's good. <laughs> you should uh, maybe get the frequency up. Yeah, yeah. You know, on that note, by the way, since we're going to kind of talk about the laugh a minute, the first thing I noticed with, oh, today we're reviewing uh, Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy series. That's what it's called. Guardians of the Galaxy series. Episode one was Road to Nowhere, but spelled N or K-N-W like k-n-o-w like no like i know but nowhere or whatever and i thought i heard that mentioned in a silver surfer thing back in the day but anyway i noticed that they tried to cram in a joke every other line like literally every other line was a joke i don't know if you guys noticed that well joke <laughs> humor uh, humor it is maybe a, lo a loose use of the term, but uh, they were. I liked the jokes mostly. They were they were pretty tried and true. We've seen them before. There they were again. I feel like that's what they do with these these, these kids cartoons. I mean, this is a cartoon, and like it's geared towards kids, and you know, kids haven't heard all these jokes before, so it's 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 easy enough to just kind of reuse them and recycle them, and then you get kids laughing, and they probably like it, but I did not, so. <laughs> oh, so so we're starting right off the bat, Michael Kenyon Rosenberg. You said you didn't like it, huh? Um, well, I love. First of all, I'll start off by saying I love Guardians of the Galaxy, the two movies that they made. I never read any of the comic books. Mm -hmm. This is the first time I've seen this cartoon in my lifetime, in this lifetime at least. Um, but uh, I love like the Guardians movies, and. You know, obviously these are the same characters. You got Star-Lord, Gamora, Drax the Destroyer, Rocket Raccoon, and Groot. Um, but one, one thing that I really did not enjoy about it is that there was no continuity between this cartoon and the movie. Because Groot is like a full-grown Groot. I was trying um, to figure that out too. Yeah, and in the movie, I think I placed even it, though. at the end of the first movie, he is like a twig. That's my first gripe. Yeah, uh, Daryl, uh, you said you you actually liked it a lot, right? <laughs> that's uh, that's that's incorrect. I, yeah, I, well, I didn't see the movies, so I'm kind of the asshole right now. <laughs> but I. Uh, uh, okay, like, okay, things that, let me tell you what I did like and what I didn't like. I did like the raccoon because he was the hero time and time again. And I recently saw a YouTube video of a raccoon that became a house pet. And so I'm on a real raccoon kick right now. <laughs> uh, so that's, that's cool. That's cool. I'm on a tree kick right now, so. <laughs> Watching a lot of tree videos? Yeah, I like su tree superheroes. <laughs> uh, uh, 
The tree was interesting. I hated the tree's voice because it's like, ugh, like it's too much. Like you. That was even... a really good. Do you, did you hear what he would always say? Let's hear an impression. Okay. Oh no! I just did it. That was it. It was like, ugh. like it sounded like if vomit. <laughs> it sounded like a burp. Yeah, pretty much. Like just human indigestion. But... <laughs> I don't know, like, but okay, so then when the gigantic tree item became a, a, like a, a twig, uh, that was cute. And that was like a, a cuter voice. And then I, I liked that character after that. <laughs> but I felt bad, you know, it had to grow again. <laughs> I don't mm -hmm. know. So like little moments like that, as a person that was meeting all these characters for the first time, like I was just kind of grasping onto. Uh, then also, of course, we had the dog that communicated telepathically. I liked that a lot too. So um, it sounds like Mike and I had the same level of knowledge of Guardians of the Galaxy. I'd never read the comics. I'd barely heard of them. I saw their two movies. I liked them a lot. I, I, I was very pleasantly surprised by how good the movies were. And they were also in Avengers, which was cool. It was just a big mix. But you know, it's nostalgic with their hooked on a feeling song and the, you know, they've got a nice eighties mix in the movies. He has like a playlist of all these eighties songs that are really fun. Um, but that's the extent of it. And it sounds like Daryl and you are in the group of people where this is completely fresh eyes and you just were forced to watch this cartoon for a podcast. And you're like, <laughs> you're like, what the fuck is going on here? Like, did it, yeah, did, did it feel I mean, like the first 30 seconds that you were like, this is not going to work for me? I, no, no, not the first 30 seconds. I gave it a fair shot. It was at least like 31 seconds, but <laughs> I, <laughs> I'm silly. I'm so silly. Uh, I, yeah, I, at least if I were watching the movie, I would have gotten Chris Pratt, but right. that didn't happen. Like, I think I that know. it was a budgetary thing, obviously, because I, I looked it up on IMDb. I was like, yeah, it's none of the mm -hmm. actors. And it's because they can't afford these guys. Right. These guys' schedules don't work with, for a kid's cartoon. When I first immediately noticed it was when Yondu came out, and it was a completely different voice from, for Yondu. It was Michael Rooker that yeah. plays him. And in this thing, the guy sounded just like a deep Kentucky gentleman or whatever. I don't know what y'all been talking about. I'm like, he's an alien. He's not Kentuckian. Well, what did he sound like in the movie? A, a li still a little tiny Southern twang, the Michael Rooker type twang, but yeah. it wasn't like a deep, heavy twang. It just was like a, you know, like a little, it was, it was a flavored, it was, it was a flavored way of speaking, not a fully accented way, if that makes sense. Did you ever see uh, The Walking Dead? No. Oh, okay, he's in The Twerking Dead, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh. So let's, uh, I guess let's just get into it and kind of talk about it bit by bit here now that we know the extent of our Guardian's knowledge. <laughs> uh, it opens up with Quill with his Hooked on a Feelin' song, which Daryl said she really liked a lot. She remembers the song well. She said she used to always go to the pizza parlor and hear that uh, in, what was it, Idaho? All of the above. Uh, not accurate, but... Oh, I was like, wow, that's a pretty good <laughs> guess. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you're right. I did get up and dance upon my coffee table while that played. What about you, Mike? Did you do that? Oh, I was jamming. Yeah, for sure. I was like, Yo, all right. I was like, all right, cool. This is uh, Guardians. They got hooked on a feeling... This is like the this is uh this is just like the movies, and then they they're scaling that building, and then Quill activates this device, and then um, it like opens the door somehow, but then everybody gets splattered with goo, and that's kind of a silly uh, silly silly kid joke, you know? What I mean, Ugh. oh, you got slimed, that yep. kind of thing, you know? Yep, yep. There was another real one too. At one point, someone Drax farted. I, mean, I don't. Oh, yeah. I don't want to skip ahead and give too too many spoilers away. But I was like, did I just see a part? Of course, you know, I had to go. I had to rewind and like right. watch it again. I was like, was that okay? I, I guess well, that's fart what... joke. I mean, kids love fart jokes, right? Yeah. Kids love to hear farts. Kids love it when other people smell farts. I mean, Ryan loves that too. But uh... farts are going to be funny forever. But, if, <laughs> but to be honest, I didn't like it in this. I was just like, that's. That's a strange thing to see in Guardians of the Galaxy, like a, a 
especially because it wasn't even well delivered. I think it would be funnier if like they're sneaking into the bad guy lair and they're like really quiet and he's like, purr, and they're like, what the hell, you know, <laughs> at least that, <laughs> that could be funny, like a nervous fart sneaks out or something. I didn't mm -hmm. think it's the first time I didn't laugh at a fart joke. But what I noticed from the very beginning, like what, what Mike was saying, uh, you know, the, the, the slime thing, what I noticed was it was just like, joke, 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 or like they were just like, first thing, Rocket's talking shit to Quill. Second, and then Groot, first thing he does, I am Groot, which is the only thing he says. And then, and then, and then Rocket talks shit to Drax, and then Gamora says something, and it's just like, in the first 10 seconds, everybody gets introduced in like a comedic way. They all have like a little cute thing that they say or whatever. And I was like, oh man, I really have to pay attention to this. I remember like, the kids cartoons back when I was a kid was it was easy to follow like you know you'd have, you could just kind of watch it it's no big deal there's one storyline it's simple whatever there's a twist at the end maybe but with this thing in the first minute I was already lost I was like oh <laughs> this is too fast for me I'm like trying to take notes and trying to keep up <laughs> uh so I can only imagine what it was like for you Daryl because at least we had previous knowledge of the show but were you able to keep up with its fast pace or did you feel like it was a easy pace no like uh i mean i appreciated those jokes because it you know it, it did provide some context and and that going back to that song like for me what i craved more than anything is relatability and familiarity so that was the only uh, piece of familiarity i had was that song and i was like okay so this is a cool guy He's uh he's cool and he, he, he likes good songs. I don't know. That, <laughs> I was like, all right, so we like him. I don't know. But then <laughs> it made it easy for you to go, okay, here's the cool guy that we relate to. Got it. Here's the yeah. tree guy, just like in every show. Okay, there's a tree right. guy. Okay. Well, that's where, you know, I very much am like, okay, there's a lot to take in. We have got all these different types of characters and I wanna know what each character is like and I wanna know like what the, the magical rules are, like what are the superpowers mm. involved specifically? Uh, and then what are, we, what are we going after in this show? And then it was a challenge for me because right as soon as I thought I was understanding our cool guy, then it becomes this thing that they didn't even go back to in the episode, which is, uh, he's either, he's like half good and half bad. That's what he was saying. Do you remember that part? Oh, when they said a uh, hero and outlaw. Yeah. Oh, right, right, yeah. Right. They yeah, beat that so, theme to death. Yeah. Yeah. Like I was really dying for clues as to under, how to better understand the characters. And when I got to that part, I was like, and now we're going halvesies. Like we have to deal with an internal conflict. Uh, I, I just wanted something more solid and firm to, to uh, attach myself to. Well, that's a good point too. And like, uh, I think, you know, this is like where if you had seen the movie, then it makes a little bit more sense. I mean, he's definitely an, an anti-hero um, and uh, hero and outlaw. I mean, that, that makes sense if you've seen the movie and that kind of explains his whole backstory and, uh, and, and, and where he's coming from and like how he was raised as well. Uh, that guy Yondu, the guy with the arrow and the little thing on his head, he actually raised Peter Quill. Uh, mm -hmm. It's not his kid, obviously. They're different. Uh, I don't know if that came through um, through the cartoon, but that's that's kind of a, one of the things that w maybe makes makes Peter's character make a little bit more sense. Yeah, I'm probably like with every piece of information I have to share, I'm pretty much it's all going to be like, well, you should have seen the movie. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That's I think that that's kind of why they gave everybody a quick catchphrase in the first 10 seconds is for anybody that hasn't watched the movies or, or kids that are too young to have seen the movies. They, that way, you know who the characters are immediately. You get it. You're like, okay, I am Groot. That's all he says. This guy's the cool guy and the leader. Rocket's kind of the, the hero, you know, and they all kind of had an intro so that those of us who have already seen the movie, we go, ah, that's our Groot or, oh yeah, we know this guy. <laughs> but those of us that haven't, they're like, oh, okay, I get it. So he's, an idiot. Okay, cool. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I thought it, it, it definitely moved very quickly and like, let us know who's what. And I, I felt like there were just so many scenes. Like, you know what it was? They had an entire movie script 
and they condensed it into 24 minutes. I mean, if you look at the amount of scenes that they had and the amount of twists and turns where it's like, okay, now they're doing this and, and now, oh, this guy just stole the thing and now he stole it back and now he betrayed him and there's all these things. I'm like, that's a full, you know, 90 page script that they put into 24 minutes and that's why I was just moving so fast. Oh, it's just, yeah, it's too fast for me. Yeah, I hear you because every time um, we progressed in the story, then there were more characters coming in too. And I was like, there's too many. I mean, that was okay for us because we already knew. It. The only character that was new there was was Korath. No, right? he was in the first one. Was he? See, okay. Yeah, he was like right at the beginning, or in the movie rather. He was he was like right at the beginning. He's the guy that catches. Cool when, okay. he's, when he's trying to steal something. We won't talk about the movie though, because yeah, because that's irrelevant, right? <laughs> um, I don't know. So then there's these squid face aliens that show up. Uh, Groot is saying, "I am Groot." Way too much. It's like we get it. You know, two to four times per episode, I think would have been fine. They don't need to do it fifteen. But by the first three minutes, he said, "I am Groot" like five times. We're like, okay, we get it, dude. We get you. We get it. We understand. Uh, I don't know. And then, and then Quinn Quill throws the 10 second timer instead of the 30. Darylin, who is your favorite character, by the way? Um, uh, oh, yeah, it's the dog. Oh, <laughs> oh Cosmo. Cosmo, yeah. The Russian, yeah. the Russian dog, the Ruski dog, right? Yeah. Uh, I don't know, like I enjoyed his, his, he was kind of arrogant in how he communicated, um, like, like with, with, there was a comment that someone said that was like, this is weird that a dog is talking and he's like, actually, <laughs> I'm just communicating with my thoughts and, uh, yeah, I'm like, like rockets a raccoon and he's talking. Come on. Yeah. Come on, and rocket. Why is that not weird? You why know? is it not weird that a tree's talking? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who is, who, okay, well, I mean, this is kind of. I guess just based on the cartoon, who was your favorite character, Mike? Cole? <laughs> Those of you at home, don't call him Mike. Call him Michael. Or call me Mike. I don't mind. Yeah, um, either way is fine. Yeah, if you call me Mike or Michael, I'll still respond to it. Um, what would you not respond to? George. Um, who did I really like? In the, in the cartoon it's kind of tough to separate like my feelings for the characters from the movies than from the cartoon i mean because in the movies drax is my favorite me drax too has all the best lines me in the too. movies <laughs> but so in the cartoon funny. he just really doesn't do anything too much it's just kind of like he farts and that's it that's like, that was like his <laughs> one, one of a, it wasn't me uh but yeah if i had to say like like without much thought about it, just strictly from the cartoon, uh, I'd say you know probably Quill. I mean, you're you're, you're kind of yeah. like made to have to root for Quill because he's like the the main character kind of and the non-alien. I think you're right. right. I think I mean for for little seven year old boys and girls or whatever, if they're just looking for they they want to give somebody for them to hang on to. Oh, okay, you know the leader, the cool guy. You know, right? Uh, yeah, I think I still liked. Okay, I guess it's from the movies because I wanted to like Drax the best. I was like, oh, cool, right. Drax, my favorite. They really did almost the least with him. All he kept right. saying is like how he wanted his revenge. You know, that was right. his whole shtick. So, yeah, maybe Star-Lord might be number one for me. But here's what I really want to know, Daryl, and is, is upon your first viewing... Who, who was your least favorite character? And name them by name and what their mission is. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> you just wanted to see me get overwhelmed, didn't you? Um, let's that's, see. He, he excels at that, sir. <laughs> well, it's pretty easy. Because, uh, by the second, I do have a panic attack. But um, let, What did uh, I tell you? Laugh every 15 seconds, Marilyn <laughs> Kelleher, ladies and gentlemen. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> That's right. So sorry, I'm also like somebody just came in for a. Oh, <laughs> So just wanted what's, to, to buy myself some time, really. What's your kitty's name? <laughs> That's Jerry. Hi, Jerry. Yeah, he's the best. How come he's ignoring me when I say hi to him? Probably doesn't like you. <laughs> he ran maybe, away. Maybe he, 
hold off on talking to him. <laughs> He's going to go to Mexico now. Okay. Um, let's see. So who do I not like? I, I didn't not like anyone. But who is your least favorite? I guess... I guess when I was still giving the show a chance in the beginning, like I was not <laughs> in the first like, minute. No, but no, it, it, like all the way to when we got to the guy who was hanging there, the one who was the teacher of, and also why do we, do. I, I, I just appear so dumb. Why do we call Quill? Like, why do we call that guy Quill, but then also star Lord? Well, yeah. that's kind of like Superman and Clark Kent. Right. Oh, okay. I mean, it's but then just kind of name also Peter. It's Peter Quill. Peter yeah. Quill, but then he also goes by Star Lord. He okay. wants like his chosen nickname. Yeah, he wants to be called Star Lord. That's something in the movie there where they're like, he's like, call me Star Lord, and they're like, what? That's Star Lord, man. <laughs> that sounds funny. Yeah, it is uh, funny. You should watch it. I, I hope that this this uh, the sourness of this cartoon did not turn you off to watching the movie because the movie is actually really good. Both of them, yeah. You could tell by how Mike's eyes lit up right there. <laughs> they really got big. It's like, it's really good. Yeah, they look sparkly like the ocean. So, um, uh, so who's your least favorite? Sorry. So it was when I was still giving the show a chance when we finally got to the guy who you just stole me his name. Yon I think. Dude. Yes. When he was hanging there, uh, I... I didn't really like it because I was like, okay, this is already in too much for me to take in. And then there's another character. And then he's kind of like, uh, he was, yeah, just not likable. And I was like trying to understand the dynamic he used to teach the guy. But uh, I don't know. Then there's like all these bats kind of that flew up. And I was like. Leeches. I think it was leeches. Oh, there were leeches. Oh, okay. Right. I was like traumatized thinking about <laughs> Um. I don't know. So uh, it's, I don't know. I just didn't like him because it, it, to me it felt excessive and this was already like too much to take on. And, and we were, so like, I didn't understand our relationship to him because it was like the whole crew was like, what? So you led us here to, to help this guy. And I did, yeah, it was just hard to understand the dynamic. You know, that was a little confusing even for me too. I didn't really understand like what the whole purpose of that whole thing was. And then like, I don't know. It just That's seemed kind of like a roundabout way of going about things. Like, That's what I meant about how like it was moving so swiftly that I would be like, wait, why are they saving this guy? And I would rewind it to find out why they're saving him. I was like, I must have missed something. And it didn't really explain much. They just were like in such a hurry to get from point A to B to C to D that they didn't really explain it. You know, they just wanted so many scenes. Each scene was 15 yeah. seconds. Who, who did you like the least, Mike? Mm. ironically probably drax hmm. like because yeah they like he was, was kind of like one-dimensional like oh we're gonna get thanos Ugh, thanos is a jerk uh no like that was kind of like his whole his whole thing and i was like in that in his heart but uh, yeah none of it was likable yeah no uh for me it might be Yondu just because like I didn't like the accent being as strong but that's biased from based on the <laughs> the you know I just didn't really get it I mean I understand the importance of the character why they needed him in the plot you know to kind of be like the, the trickster character or whatever mm -hmm. um but yeah when you mentioned Drax maybe you're right he was just like because there was there was nothing they gave him one line other than i just want to kill thanos and it was a fart thing right and it was a it was the only time i've ever heard a fart joke that didn't make me laugh i was like that's pretty <laughs> bad dude i don't know i was like i was more like puzzled as to why it was there well it's, um, maybe it's because also because he was my favorite character in the movies and i just mm -hmm. didn't like what they did with him in this also so i'm sure that there's some of that bias creeping in we liked him a lot too because he was played by dave batista who's an yeah. awesome wrestler uh... Carolyn. So you oh, know Dave Batista from wrestling. Yes, my fave. Well, and Groot, the in the movies, the voice of Groot is Vin Diesel. Mm -hmm. Like he always says is I am Groot, but that's still it's cool that it's Vin Diesel kinda. I guess I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, no, that does change it a little bit for me. Yeah. 
<laughs> and Gamora is Zoe Saldana, who is pretty high in the nerd spectrum because she's in she's in uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. So that's Marvel. Uh, Avatar. She's in Star Trek. I mean, she's really making a name for herself in nerd fandom. And then in the movies, Rocket Raccoon is voiced by Bradley Cooper. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I like him a lot. A and then, of course, story. you've got Chris Pratt. So, I mean, yeah, he's definitely a- watch the movie. Yeah, for sure. But like, okay, when compared to Bradley Cooper versus Chris Pratt, like obviously Bradley Cooper, come on. But you're only getting his voice though in Rocket Raccoon. That's so all I like... need. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't sing though, sorry to say. Oh, wow. Well, I'll take what I can get. <laughs> okay. Speaking of which, uh, let's talk about you a little bit, Daryl and Kelleher. We're going to talk a little bit more about this and actually cover the episode rather than just my favorite kind of games like who did you like best and worst I love those things but I want to talk about let's talk about Darylin for a little bit um where are you from Darylin I am from uh sorry my com- like literally the second you started asking me my computer had a little mini panic attack uh, so back I'm- to Guardians of the Galaxy <laughs> uh- <laughs> okay I'm good what happened was my HDMI cord loosened, and so and then I couldn't see you guys, and I was like, I need eye contact to get through describing myself. Okay, <laughs> um, so I'm from Boston, but I moved to LA from New York. I live in LA. The end. And you create hilarious cat videos, and the first time we found out about you was with one of your cat videos. We saw one of the stars of those uh, videos on your lap a second ago. You want to tell us about your cats or your YouTube channel? <laughs> I want to tell you about both of those things. Um, cats love my life. I have three, and they're kind of like a cat pack. Uh, I know three is excessive. It's a little more than what is socially acceptable, but I really like to ride that line. Uh, I, you know, really flirt with disaster. So, um, I don't know. I, I love my, my little cat family. That's that answer. And on my YouTube channel, I really just have two cat videos. So my, like, yes, like I, I loved creating that cat video that I made last year and I am due to make a third cat video. Oh, sure. So stay tuned for that world. <laughs> <laughs> yes, definitely. Uh, I've thought about making a, a cat sitcom, but I can't go into that idea. I, <laughs> that's, we won't share anything more there, but keep you on your, the edge of your seats. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, but my channel is, is pretty much, you know, Daryl and TV. Uh, I try to share my feelings <laughs> and I tell stories, or, try, to, oh, okay. try to be vulnerable, but at the same time, I try to share a productive message and try to uh, fight Depression with productivity. That's the real trick, isn't it? Yeah. Oh yeah. It's not easy. It's not easy. Saying it's not easy is not easy either. (laughs) Uh huh. So that's the description of my channel and my cats. Do you uh? Do you have like a specific time when making your videos that? felt like the most frustrating and or difficult? Sure. That, I, liked it. I like that question because it's got some depth to it. Uh, yeah. I, so I, uh, okay, so honestly, when I lived in New York, I was doing stand-up comedy for a while and I always wanted to be able to make videos and I would go in my room and and try to record it and I was so scared like I would record it and I would just hate the way it looked and I I would just ramble and I was just like I didn't know how to edit like I had all the, the odds up against me and my confidence was so low and so it, the beginning was just so hard and, and finally, I guess what I needed was to get to LA and like get sort of relieve some pressure from me. Like the, uh, I suppose I was putting a lot of pressure on me in this, in my, <laughs> well, I was putting a lot of pressure on myself in the stand up comedy world. So to like take a step away from comedy and just sort of go out to LA and be on my own and just 
really work on my sense of individuality and just try to um, connect to myself and, and then find a way to share it, uh, that, that has been a really rewarding journey for me. Awesome. Mike, Mike, have you enjoyed her videos that you've seen of them? I have, yeah. Oh, okay. Good. <laughs> there we go. There you yeah. go. <laughs> <laughs> Each one that comes out, I always watch it all the way through. Whoa. Ooh, that's quite a treat. Brings my average up. Yeah. So, so what? tell us what your uh, YouTube channel is exactly. As in, okay, so I... As in youtube.com slash... Oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> your address. Slash Daryl and Kelleher. Okay, we'll put it in the description box below so people can find it and not have to guess how that's spelled. That sounds great. Look down, folks. I did what Michael did because I liked it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I hated it. Whoa. Passion. <laughs> Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, any, anyway, is there anything else uh, you'd like to tell us about yourself? Uh, you're a stand-up comedian. You're now doing YouTube videos, which are hilarious and informative and inspirational and quirky. You, you, definitely, uh, you definitely have the quirky nail down that people like, I think. Thank you. Um, yeah, quirky, it's, it's, uh, it's an interesting word, isn't it? It's kind of like the human miscellaneous. Uh, <laughs> I thank you though. I appreciate it. I, I don't even mean to be quirky. I, I don't even know what, like, I just, I don't know. <laughs> My answer is, I don't know, but thank you. I, you're, just, like, you're just being yourself. And I think that's, what's important in, in, in those kinds of videos that you're making too, is to like, let your own personality shine through. And I think that you do that well. So. Thank you so much. Cause like, I have been a lot in the past, the person that just is so quiet that they kind of just reflect other people. And um, it's been hard for me to be a, a, a human. <laughs> so it's just really nice to, um, to, to work on myself. That's really what I'm doing on my channel. Awesome. Well, you do a great job of being a human, even though we all know you'd rather be a cat. <laughs> Let's really get down to it. <laughs> yeah, you just really like uh, revealed the crux of, of my inner struggle. Speaking of which, you guys want to talk about Guardians of the Galaxy more? All right. <laughs> uh, so what's next? So the bad guys attack. And by the way, thank you for joining us, Erlen Kelleher. You're awesome. Oh, my pleasure. Uh, yeah, so the bad guys attack. Quinn throws a grenade. Yondu is hanging over a pit. They rescue him. That's when uh, Raccoon says, so what are we, heroes or outlaws, like Daryl said, and they kind of feel like they brought that up like five times. They kept repeating right. things. Well, I guess also like the, I think one thing we have to talk about is the key to this whole plot is the crypto cube. Um, but what's inside the crypto cube? How do you open it? What's the key? How, how, what, they talk about this key to open it. And Yondu says, I've got the key. Uh, but then it turns out that the key is really Peter Quill. And it says he's Spartax in origin or something. The Spartax, is that what yeah. they're saying? Um, but then that doesn't jive with, uh, with the movies either because... As we know, spoilers from the second movie. Uh, maybe I shouldn't say it in case. Plug your ears, Darylin. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm yeah. good, guys. Please. He's actually like half demigod, so it's like uh, it's half human, half demigod, not Spartax. But I don't know if uh, if uh, what that the character that uh, Kirk Douglas plays is Spartax. I don't even know what they said. He was like a demigod or something. Maybe maybe Spartax is the brand of demigod, like when people want a Kleenex, they really want a tissue, but Kleenex is the brand. So maybe people just say Spart people just say Spartax because that's the brand of demigod. Right? Who knows? Yeah. So what else happened that was really exciting? 
I mean, I don't know. I feel like we're dumping on this thing a lot. I didn't, I think that I'm sure kids love it. I think it might've even been too fast paced for kids though, but like, cause they can't keep up with all that stuff. We have trained minds. We've been children for 30 years. We were good at it. So we, and even I was like, this is moving too fast for me. So I feel like kids are just watching like, you know, the, the explosions and the action and listening to the funny lines and picking their characters, their favorite characters more than they're following the, the plot. Maybe, I don't know. Well, I mean, maybe that's what it is for kids too. I mean, you don't really necessarily need a plot so much. Maybe they tried to add a plot in case adults wanted to watch it. It's all the, even though it's like a, a pretty terrible plot and like, like full of full of full of holes and uh, that bad, huh? <laughs> <laughs> but I guess one thing that I did did think that was good about it was just the really striking visuals. I mean, um, they I th- I really like the way they portrayed uh, nowhere, which is like a, a deceased demigod. Uh, it's like his uh, the skull of a deceased um, demigod or something like that. And so I thought that that was portrayed really interesting, and I thought that. It was interesting that nowhere was kind of waking up. I mean, that was kind of that was an interesting thing to me because, you know, that we don't see that in the movies at all. So I guess uh, I, I do like that we get a little bit of a peek at some stuff that's not in the movies, like that dog Cosmo is not in the movies. But I mean, he fits sorry, right into the universe. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but he fits right into that whole universe. You know, what I mean, he's a, a talking dog. I mean, he got a talking raccoon and a talking tree, so might as well have a talking dog. It was interesting though that he was like a Russian talking dog, um, named Cosmo, like cosmonaut. Right. You know, it would have been cool though if they called nowhere. If they said, "Oh, the nowhere man is waking up," so it'd be like a nice little Beatles nod for us to yeah, enjoy. It's not really a man though; it's a demigod, genderless. Your thoughts, Daryl? Uh, well, I, I don't, what's, what Beatles song is that from? Nowhere Man. I don't know it. That's He's a, a real nowhere man. Listen to it. I don't forget Sitting how Sitting in but. his nowhere, nowhere land. land. Okay. Making all his all nowhere, his nowhere plans, plans for nobody. For nobody. I don't even Sing along, Darylin. <laughs> uh, was that in that recent Beatles movie? That song? I don't know. Maybe. I don't think I saw that movie. Yesterday? Yes- yesterday? No, I didn't see that one. Oh, it's too bad. I thought Yesterday was going to be more of a Beatles movie, but it really was just a, a rom-com about a guy that likes to play Beatles songs on his acoustic guitar. Yeah. It's too bad. I, uh, should we turn this into a Yesterday review? <laughs> <laughs> For 14 seconds. Go Great. ahead. Uh, bad. No, just kidding. It was fine. <laughs> Yeah, it's between fine and bad for me. What about you? Oh, you didn't see it. Mike? I didn't see it, but the preview does not look that great. Hmm. Okay. So uh, then Gamora get, brings up the running joke about the hero outlaw thing that they're obsessed with. Gamora was also leaving me wanting a little Gamora um, because she didn't, there wasn't much to her. They didn't give her much other than a couple of snide remarks and just kind of being there it was always like oh and Gamora's there too yeah uh-huh. I thought in the beginning she was going to have a much larger presence and then she kind of disappeared it was also kind of weird that they like drew her pretty sexy too like like for little kids like why what, what's the <laughs> point of that <laughs> like, man that's how all cartoons always I mean if you think about when we're kids we didn't notice it but that's the thing is as kids don't notice it Right. I mean, I even me, I didn't even notice what she was dressed like. I was like, okay, that's Gamora. Okay. But I mean, if you even if you look at Quill, he's like kind of boxy, like his like just in the in the picture in the background, his his jaw, his jaw is kind of boxy. His uh, his his shoulders are very boxy. Mm-hmm. But they definitely gave Gamora some feminine curves. Oh yeah. But they're changing that in a lot of cartoons that come out now, like in the last two years, it's like. Uh, Barbie. Have you seen Barbie the cartoon? No. Uh, oh. Twice twice this week. <laughs> no, no, I haven't. I didn't know there was a Barbie cartoon, but maybe we'll, uh, hey, WTF Barbie down in the uh, comments below if you want to torture us. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to verbally request it right now, so. Okay. 
that's uh, your assignment for your next. Well, you you may request it. (laughs) (laughs) We have no problems with that, right, Michael? No. Requests only, not. So, but what were you saying about how Barbie has no more curves? It's not that she doesn't have curves. It's just that they made like a, a very like obvious choice to to not have her be the, what Barbie is, originally was. You know, just Plastic. to give her more, yeah, to give her more depth to turn her into to or to I guess increase her relatability. Hmm. So yeah, I mean we are seeing a change because this cartoon came out. In, was it twenty fifteen? Yeah. I do think it's I thought it was later. I thought it was 2 2017. No, 2015 because the movie came out in 2014 and then this cartoon came out in 2015. You're right, 2015. And then the second movie came out in like 2017 or something like that. Yeah, I had to go to Wikipedia after I watched it to like get a plot summary <laughs> of words. <laughs> so that's why I know that. That's what Mike does every week. He doesn't really watch it. He just kind of looks it up on, on IMDb and he goes, all right, he'll be in, you know, I get the gist of it. Ryan. Ryan, you already had your one joke for the hour. I didn't say (laughs) one joke an hour. I said one laugh per hour and that continued to prove that. All right. That's a good point. Yeah. uh, So moving along with this episode, Groot dies. Right, but oh, so this is the the inconsistency that Mike one of the up. many inconsistencies, really. But I didn't really think so because, for all we know, it because you're saying that he was a baby at the end of the first one, right? He was just a twit, yeah, right. And then this one takes place in between the movie one and two, right? Right. So what if he grew into a giant tree again? Boom. Then this episode starts. Then he dies, becomes a twig again, and then there you go. Picks up where movie number two starts. I'm not buying it because at the at the beginning of the second movie, he's like a child Groot. And then by the end of the second movie, he's a teenage Groot. So, you know, it just doesn't jive to me that it he takes grows him fast. That, he can grow that fast. Maybe he does, so. though. Trees don't grow that fast, Ryan. Well, okay, well, what about magic trees that talk and stretch? But he's an alien. He's not a magic tree. So he could grow really fast as an alien. Aliens grow fast, almost all of them. You, you didn't, didn't know, know that? that. Except for Yoda. That. Yoda doesn't. Right. See? Yoda grows. Well, Daryl, and I think you got to break the tide here. So all eyes are on you here. Don't you think they should have made it obvious if that were one of the rules of magic, that he was a fast, fast-growing being they should have okay we shouldn't be in this position we should not <laughs> figure this out <laughs> establish rules right take out yeah take out Come one on, of these guys. twists and take out one of these twists and turns and extra scenes and give us some exposition what you're saying is you want exposition and mythology yes with other words <laughs> So, but what, what do you think? Does he grow fast and it works fine with continuity or it works or he grows slowly, which is probably not true, but is slowly probably a You're gonna force me to choose a side. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. but you know, you want to choose my side really, because it just makes more sense that a tree would grow slowly. <laughs> I think the growing fast actually does make more sense oh, but in your face my oh god no, but she feel, hasn't seen the movies you. though she hasn't right seen now the movies. I, I actually feel you're following pain right what now. you guys were saying about it i mean i don't know i don't even know i'm literally saying i don't know no no you're like, you're right you're right that's don't go back it's okay <laughs> <laughs> we could just move on with that one and that was that was a really you really guys good hate answer. me really really good answer darylin uh, then we get to the part. That ends so sadly. How can we move on from this? Michael is so sad, and Ryan is just emotionless as always. No, no. Michael's <laughs> sadness actually gives me strength. Like I feed off of the sadness of others, but specifically Mike. When Mike gets sad, it's like I get like this. It's almost like a superpower for me. I feel like I am the sixth guardian of the galaxy. Yeah, he's yeah, like, like a, an energy vampire. 
Yeah. In the way that Michael's eyes sparkle when he talks about things he likes. I see where <laughs> this is going. <laughs> they have lit up like uh, crystals. <laughs> the dark crystal. Which, by the way, oh, that could be one we watch. Hey, WTF Dark Crystal, if you guys want us to watch the new Dark Crystal series that Sounds I tried like you to watch and that. couldn't get through. Well, um, anyway, then, then we get to the Drax fart joke, which we already kind of covered. Like, yeah. it, as Mike said, it was a gas. I did not say that. <laughs> <laughs> I would not have said that. What would you have said? All right, then you make a fart, fart pun. You're lo looking for me to make a thing? I don't know. That's that was bad. No, that was funny. So, oh, I get it. Methane. Okay. So, anyway, sorry for setting you up to fail there, Mike. Yeah, you really did. <laughs> Once again, <laughs> you're trying to make me sad again to give yourself power. So we're both going to be thinking about like a fart pun for the last few minutes. <laughs> We've only got a few minutes left, but we're going to come up with one. Then, oh yeah, then there's a point where then it turns into. A Mission Impossible where Yondu is lowering Quill, right? And he's like right. this, and he's lowering him down. And what did not you... so fast. Yeah. And then the bad guys show up again. There are like ten scenes where the bad guys show up. Yeah. Well, and there's different bad guys. First, you know, first there was those weird squid monsters or whatever they were uh, the bug things and then that, there's the that was in nowhere right nowhere has the squid monsters right no i think that was uh when they're that that building they were breaking into in the beginning but they but they saw them again later didn't they the your lygian guards is what i had written down hmm. and uh no but later it was uh I forget what they're called. Necro I wanted to call them necromongers just because that's what they reminded me of. Um, What's that? It's from uh, uh, Chronicles of Riddick. Never mind. Okay. Um, but yeah, those those kinds of guys. Uh, but wait, Chronicles of Riddick does have a tie to Guardians of the Galaxy. Why? Because Vin Diesel? Mm -hmm. That's not a tie, though. Um <laughs> That's just that's like uh, six degrees of separation from Kevin Bacon. That's not uh, that's not a tie-in. Um, but yeah, there's those those guards. I forget what they're called. Uh, whatever. Uh, Captain Marvel was one of them at the beginning of the Captain Marvel movie. I'm just skipping around to other movies now, and so just probably go to somebody else. I'm saying. All right. Well, what other options do we have? I guess that's you, Darylin. Darylin, did you like <laughs> it when Cosmo the dog peed on Groot? or peed on whoever what Drax who was holding Groot because the dog like smelled Groot and was like, oh, he's a tree. So let me pee on Drax that's holding Groot. I don't know if you caught that. I didn't catch that actually. By this point I was really checking out and I was like, is this over yet? <laughs> and was it? <laughs> no. <laughs> Almost. Yeah. But it was, it was only good. like 22 minutes long, Daryl and Kelleher. Y yes, thank you for using my full name. You really What's your middle name? Nicole. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, I don't know. I just wanted it to end. The end. That's all I wanted. <laughs> when it ended, were you happy? Or did you think, why is it echoing? Or so when it ended, it said to be continued, and right. I was like, I will not watch the next one. <laughs> I was like, no, thank you. Well, no, no spoilers. Uh, in at the very end of this thing, we're gonna go ahead and ask you if you would like to see the next episode. So you know, stay tuned for that, guys. Hey, stick around for another couple minutes to find out if Darylin would watch this again. I think so, uh, but we'll see. And then, yeah, I've got in my notes here that they were attacked by. Oh, you know what it was? They were attacked by these metallic tentacles. The other ones were oh, right. like people with squid faces. This had squid appendages attacking right. them. So it's very squid heavy. <laughs> and they're aliens. Well, I mean, what does an alien look like? You know what I mean? Like we don't we don't know. I mean, there's the grays. 
raccoons and trees, I guess. Yeah. Squid monsters. What's your Cthulhu's. favorite kind of uh, alien, Darylin? Um, That movie, District 9. Cool. With the inverted kneecaps. Yeah. I cool. In that movie, you like the aliens better than the humans. Yeah. So... I don't, well, I, actually, it's not about their appearance that I like. I liked their hearts and souls. I didn't see those. I just saw but, their exteriors. I like the Dutch actor that was in it, whose name I don't remember, but he was really good. Yeah, great movie. <laughs> so fine. All right, fine. Fine. Let's just get to it. My uh, favorite aliens are Cthulhu's. Nice. I don't know if they're actually aliens. They're, they're, they're considered deep ones. I guess they're probably from the sea, but uh, mm -hmm. that's kind of would, a squid monster. Michael Kenyon Rosenberg, would you, of your own volition, watch episode two of Guardians of the Galaxy just to be like, hey, maybe it gets better. Maybe it's one of those things where it's like, it gets really good in the third season, people say, and you're like, I'm not going to watch it for three seasons. For two. So go ahead and would you? Um, Nah. I'm good. How much money would it take to get you to watch a second episode? I mean, just to watch an episode? Not much. I mean, give me a hundred bucks, I'll watch another episode, but... Uh, Jeez, not much? That's expensive to watch 20 minutes? All right, then a dollar a minute. Okay. $22, $22 and I'll watch another episode. Really? What about you? You're right. What about you, Darylin? Would you uh, watch episode two of your own volition like after this is over are you gonna you know once you get a chance you're gonna get some popcorn and just kind of binge watch this i thought the question was gonna be how much would it take for you to watch it <laughs> <laughs> i i mean okay so say it was like tiger king and it was like tiger king tiger king the new show that is on netflix that everyone is talking about but you um and everyone's like i'm not talking about it either though well, that everyone's talking about, but both of you. <laughs> uh, but um, yeah, so let's say it was like that. And it was like this thing where I felt peer pressure. I would give it another chance. But that's it. No more chances. Just one chance. And if you don't get on the first chance. So uh, then Darylin says, you know, you're out of my life forever. All I need is my kitties and whatever shows I'm peer pressured into watching. <laughs> so for me, I would, I, I don't really watch much. So it's going to be a lot tougher. Even if it's something I like, I probably wouldn't watch it again. This one didn't quite do it for me. I think what would be good about it is just the lore. Because some people, they just need to consume everything about Marvel to know why this character did that. And then so that later on when somebody says, Drax doesn't even, you know, like Thanos. And the guy can go, actually, uh, in, in comic book number 237 of Guardians of the Galaxy, they, it said that they had a pass, when, you know, whatever. And then they like to... They're, they're, Drax doesn't even have a gastrointestinal system. Well, actually... Yeah. <laughs> right. So anyway, I guess that's it. It's to be continued, but we may never know the answer. Um, so one thing we'd like to request is those of you in the comments below that have watched or that are going to watch episode two of this, please let us know how it ends because we really, we just got to know. I mean, we got to know what, what happens in episode two. Anyway, uh, thanks all very much for joining us. Remember, if you want us to watch something, just say WTF and whatever series you want us to watch or tell us what you thought of this show. What, what did it get on IMDb? What was the score it got? What do you guys think? What do I think or what am I seeing on IMDb right now? Actually, I'm, okay. I'm in the episode, so. Yeah, it's 7.3. My guess was 7.1, pretty close. Uh, Mine says 7.6. Uh, uh, well, this is specifically on the episode Road to Nowhere, not the series. Oh, so dang. see, it does get better. Actually, uh, I saw that the ratings on Wikipedia went up every single episode. I think it was only like... Really? Yeah, see, Mike? So that's it. We got a... Yeah. First episode, like 300,000 people watched it, and then up to 700,000 by the third. Wow. 
what a deal. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, thanks everybody for joining us. Uh, we're going to have more fun like this uh, where we watch just hilarious shows like this that are, you know, action packed and interesting and fun. The password is password. Yeah, <laughs> that was a good one, I guess. We've seen that joke before. <laughs> uh, Daryl, and any parting words? Uh, farewell. Subscribe to my channel, please. Okay. Uh, Michael, any parting words? Subscribe to my channel too, please, pretty please. All right. So for superstar Daryl and Kelleher, Michael Kenyon Rosenberg, comedian, and Ryan T. Husk, that's me. Thank you very much for joining us, and we'll see you next time. By the way, Daryl, you got off easy. We were supposed to ask you some rapid-fire questions when we were talking to you. Next time. Next time we're going to do it twice. Okay. Bye, everybody. Goodbye. Okay,